Hello and welcome to your EOC practice test one video test explanations. So hopefully by now you've completed your practice test and you have it right next to you so that when we go through these test items you can correct any mistakes that you may have made. Also be sure to follow us on social media on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at GovDogs. So without further ado, let's get into the test. Okay, so number one says, the three branches of the federal government are known as. So this is one of those questions where you either have it or you don't. The answer here is A, the executive, legislative, and judicial. At this point in your civics career, you should have a pretty firm grasp on what the three branches of government are. Obviously, again, executive, legislative, and judicial. Number two, which Supreme Court case established judicial review, right? Now, the judicial review process itself is actually the Supreme Court's ability to say whether or not something is constitutional or unconstitutional. This comes up with Marbury versus Madison. So the answer here is going to be C. If you got this one incorrect, what I suggest is you go back into your landmark library with all your Supreme Court cases and thoroughly review each of those and the so what, the important part and the purpose and why we care about each of these Supreme Court cases. The answer to number two is C. Three, this type of government gets its power directly from the people. Now there's a specific word that I want you to pay attention to in this test question, and that word is directly, right? So a lot of times you can actually answer the question by just using specific vocab in the question itself. In this case, we're looking at directly, right? So we know that a government gets its power from the people is a democracy, but you have two test, I, test question, or answers here that potentially could work out for this question. You have a direct democracy and a representative democracy. Now again, that keyword directly is going to point you to the correct answer, which is C, direct democracy in this case. Four, this section is known as the introduction to the constitution. Now be careful with this test question here. So we have A, we the people, B therefore, C the preamble, and D the articles. The answer here is going to be C the preamble. Now the state of Florida will give you tricky questions like this to try to throw you off of the correct answer. So yes, the preamble does start with the words we the people, but that's not what the question is asking. They're asking for the specific section that is known as the introduction to the constitution. That answer is going to be C, the preamble. Five, this event aimed to attack the federal armory in Springfield, Massachusetts, and eventually led to the writing of the constitution. D is the correct answer here. This is Shays Rebellion. So Shays Rebellion really highlighted the inefficiencies of the Articles of Confederation, not allowing the federal government to have basically any power to enforce any of their laws, collect taxes, etc., and putting a lot of power in the state's hands, which eventually they abuse. Daniel Shays rebels against the abuses of the state, and eventually it's pretty clear that we need some form of a new form of a constitution to govern the United States. Six. Roughly how many nations make up the United Nations or the UN? The answer here is D, about 193. Now this is going to fluctuate. Historically, we've had members added and subtracted from the UN. So just be aware that if they do ask you a question like this, it's about 193. Seven, what is the minimum age requirement to run for president of the United States? Answer here is C, 35 years old. Now this is another one of those questions where you either got it or you don't basically general recall question. Now there aren't too many requirements to becoming the president of the United States. So if you got this one incorrect, I recommend you brushing, brush up on those requirements. Number eight, which of the following is an example of diplomacy? So whenever you hear the words diplomacy or diplomat, I want you to think of the United States and their relations with other countries. All right. The answer here is A, nations join together to deal with issues. So whenever you hear of a diplomat or diplomacy, think the United States and their friendships and relationships with other countries around the world. Number nine, what role does the media play in government? You have A, watchdog, B, to inform the public, C, both A and B, and then D, to sell you products. So the media obviously does sell you products inadvertently, but that's not really their role in government. And the answer here is going to be C, both A and B. So they are a watchdog to highlight inefficiencies or wrongdoing by politicians or governments, and B, to inform the public Yes, the media's job is to inform you on what's going on around the world and in your local community and in your country as well. 10. How does the rule of law affect government and institutions? So this is a definitional question where you need to know what the rule of law is. So rule of law is definitely an American principle that you should have seen throughout the year. And the rule of law basically means that nobody is above the law, right? The law applies to everybody evenly, whether you're the president, whether you're a school teacher or a lawyer, etc. right? You must follow the law. doesn't matter who you are. And the answer here is A, it holds government officials and institutions accountable, right? doesn't matter who you are. You could be Harvard. You could be the president of the United States. You violate the law. You still have to pay some sort of price. 11, how many Supreme Court justices are present in the U.S. Supreme Court? C, nine. Again, a recall question. If you're familiar with the structure of the Supreme Court, which you should be, 
There are nine justices in total. That odd number is on purpose. So just another recall question. Make sure that you know that there are nine Supreme Court justices in the Supreme Court. Twelve. The Bill of Rights in the state of Florida, in the Constitution, is known as. So in Florida, we don't call the Bill of Rights the Bill of Rights. We call them the A, Declaration of Rights. Now, a lot of state governments will have some sort of Bill of Rights mixed into their constitution. It kind of goes along with the fact that a lot of state governments mimic the federal government. So the answer here is going to be A. In Florida, we call it the Declaration of Rights. Number 13, if both houses of Congress pass a different version of the bill, the bill goes to, you have a couple of answer choices here, A, filibuster, B, the president, C, the Supreme Court, and D, conference committee. So the answer here is going to be conference committee. Say the House passes one version of the bill and the Senate passes another version of the bill. That bill cannot go to the president unless it's one bill packaged together. So what conference committee does is takes the House and the Senate's version of the bill and allows each house of the legislature to kind of work out and come to some sort of common ground so that they can pass the bill onto the president for approval or for veto. So conference committee, again, is just kind of hashing out the differences and, and finding some common ground on the bill so that they could pass that off to the president. 14, what is the difference between the U.S. Constitution and Florida's Constitution? So the answer here is B. Florida's Constitution is more specific. Now, the example that I use in my classroom is I always ask my students, is it easier for me to make specific rules for you in this classroom or for the school as a whole? And the answer, obviously, is it's very easy for me to make more specific rules for my classroom. Why? Because they're all the same age, they have similar interests, it's a smaller group of people, therefore I can be more specific. The larger the population gets, the harder it is to be specific with your rules. So the U.S. Constitution is very broad, right? Florida's Constitution is going to be more specific. Why? Because it's less people with more commonality, what they do and how they live their lives, etc., than the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution has to take into account everybody from Florida to Alaska, right? Very different ways of life, very different needs in those states. The state of Florida can be more specific because it's only serving the state of Florida. 15. Which case ruled that the right to a lawyer applies to state courts even if the accused cannot afford one? This is C. This is the original Florida man, Clarence Earl Gideon, in Gideon versus Wainwright. All right? So Gideon versus Wainwright, Gideon argued that he should be provided a lawyer even though he couldn't afford one in a state case. Before this, that right was only ex basically given to anybody in a federal case. So Gideon versus Wainwright says, hey, I have the right to a lawyer even in a state case. So the answer here is going to be C. 16, this amendment outlawed poll taxes. This is 24. The 24th Amendment outlaws poll taxes. Poll taxes were a certain sum of money that you had to pay in order to vote. Obviously, that's unconstitutional. A lot of that was designed to discourage African-American voters. So the answer here is going to be B, 24. 17, which political party is generally in favor of more government involvement in citizens' lives? This is going to be the Democrat Party. All right, The Democrats do provide a lot of social welfare programs as part of their platform. And in order to pay for that, you know, those programs, you need tax revenue. So if you want to tax more, then you need to get more involved in your citizens' lives. Generally, the answer here is going to be A. 18. Which act was a catalyst for the Boston Tea Party? A is the answer here, the Stamp Act. So the Stamp Act is putting taxes on things like paper products and all that type of stuff. The colonists obviously were super upset about that, and they re retaliated by pretty much throwing a bunch of tea into the Boston Harbor. 19. Which event limited colonial expansion west of the Appalachian Mountains? This is going to be C, the Proclamation of 1763. So King George, basically, after the French and Indian War, had all of that territory west of the Appalachian Mountains. He did know that Native Americans were there. He did know that some of the French were still there. So in order to prevent going to war again and to further the debt that England was facing, he basically said to the colonists that you guys cannot move west of the Appalachian Mountains. And the colonists' opinion of that was that he was you know, basically limiting their economic freedom. He didn't want them to settle over there to make money, etc. So that was obviously a point of contention catalyst for the revolution as well. The answer here is going to be the proclamation of 1763. 20, which is an example of an international organization? So you could consider all of these answer choices an organization, but only one is an international organization. Now, international means the entire world. The answer is B, the World Bank. So you want to use these test questions to your advantage. Try to find some of those keywords that you can use to better answer the question. Answer to number 20 is B. 21, which branch of government enforces laws? So the main priority of the executive branch is to enforce laws. The answer here is B. 
Again, either you know it or you don't. This kind of goes back to that first question about the branches of government. It's not enough to just know what those branches are called. You need to actually know what their purpose is. Answer here is B. 22. Which form of government is controlled by one ruler with absolute power? Okay. The best answer here is going to be aut an aut autocracy. Okay. The prefix auto means one. Um, again, you can kind of use play that word game with the questions and the answers. So the best answer here is going to be an autocracy. 23. Which article of the Constitution describes the legislative branch? This is going to be Article 1. Okay. Legislative, executive, judicial. Article 1 is the legislative, Article 2 is the executive, and Article 3 is the judicial. So just something that you should know. We talked about that previously. 24. Which answer choice best describes the Cold War? So this is more of a U.S. history question. It does apply to civics as well, especially when we get into our chapters about geopolitical relations. The answer here is C. Conflict between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Another recall question. You should know what the Cold War is. The Soviets and communism versus the dem democracy in the United States. Have which Supreme Court case ruled that segregation was constitutional? Be careful here, okay? Words are important. This says ruled that segregation is constitutional, right? So there are two possible answer choices here that deal with segregation. You have C, Brown versus Board of Ed, and you have D, Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson, and probably one of the worst Supreme Court decisions ever, ruled that segregation was legal as long as the facilities were equal. Obviously, inherently, that's incorrect. Things that are separate can't be equal. But the answer here is going to be D, Plessy versus Ferguson. Brown versus Board of Ed, which is C, actually overturned Plessy versus Ferguson a little bit further down the line. So the answer here is going to be D. 26, which Supreme Court case ruled that freedom of speech applies to students in public school? Tinker versus Des Moines. The answer is B. Again, wore the black armbands to protest the Vietnam War. They were told to take off the armbands. They said that that violated their First Amendment right to freedom of speech, and the Supreme Court agreed. Okay, the answer here is going to be Tinker versus Des Moines. 27, the president basically get his members of cabinet. The answer is A, he appoints his members of cabinet. All right? He doesn't elect them. All of the above makes no sense, and then none of the above again makes no sense. So the president appoints members of his cabinet. The president gets to choose. 28, a group of people who share a point of view about an issue and unite to promote their ideas are called interest groups. Okay? The purpose of interest groups are to influence legislation about issues that they care about. So whether it's the tobacco lobby, or maybe it's the alcohol lobby, or an environmental lobby, their job is basically to promote legislation that favors their interests. The answer here is B. Who approves presidential treaties? The answer is A, Senate. Anytime there's approval needed in Congress, it's going to be the Senate. All right? So anything that needs to be approved, whether it's a presidential appointment, whether it's a treaty, all right, the Senate is really going to handle that. So the answer here is A. And 30, why did Thomas Paine write his pamphlet, Common Sense? The answer is C, to persuade the colonists to become independent from England. Now, why common sense is so important is because it legitimately did persuade colonists to become independent from England. Thomas Paine basically laid out the reasoning to become independent. Many colonists agreed with him, and that was another catalyst for the Revolutionary War.